Good evening all. Uh, this is another video in my series which I'm calling Chip on Breadboard because I've put an old chip, uh, this time it's an old Intel 8251A UART, on breadboard and got it to work. So here's the chip. As I say, it's a UART, uh, a Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. Um, it's the 8251A Intel and the date on there is 1980. Now this is a very tricky chip to get working on breadboard because it's designed to have a microprocessor send uh, firstly a mode word, then a control word, and then bytes of data to this chip. And for every byte of data you write to it, and of course the bytes of data are written in parallel. Um, the, the byte is currently being set by this set of eight resistors, four there and two there and two on the other side. For every byte of data you write to the chip, it squirts it out as serial. And uh, here it is on the oscilloscope. Now I've got two traces here. Uh, the top one, the yellow one, is the transmit clock. So that's just uh, a square wave. And then the bottom trace, the green trace, is actually the serial data. Now, serial data can at first glance be a little bit tricky to understand. The scope is set to trigger uh, using the UART trigger, which is incredibly clever because I had trouble triggering this on any other setting. I was trying to do it with a falling edge trigger to see this initial uh, falling edge of the start bit, but I just couldn't get it to work reliably. Once I'd set it to the UART trigger, it's locked up absolutely fine. This is a live updating display. Um, it's not static, it's constantly moving, but the UART is transmitting the same byte over and over again. So what do we have? Well, here's the start bit, and the scope is triggering right in the middle of the start bit. Then there's uh, the least significant bit goes out first, so it's one, zero, 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 and then there are two stop bits. Now, that only sounds like five bits of data. And in fact, there are only five bits of data being sent out because it's very difficult to set this UART up for eight bits. Now, not convinced about this uh, data byte, this repeating data byte? Well, you don't have to be because if I press this bus button, I can actually switch on the serial bus analyzer. Uh, it doesn't always lock on first time every time. So let me just go to config and I'll just uh, twiddle the bits to six. Uh, no, I'm actually changing the LSB MSB order. And there it is, it's locked on. So it's now doing a serial decode. So you can see that the data is actually this part contained in this uh, widened area here. It's uh, going out least significant bit first, as I say. So it's one, zero, 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 zero. These are stop bits and that's the start bit. So you can ignore those. And it's decoding it. The scope is actually decoding this as zero, 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 one, because it is. It's zero, 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 one. The least significant bit is transmitted first by the UART. And uh, this data transmission is live. It's actually happening uh, repeatedly. And the serial decode on the scope is also live. So if I change the data pattern on these resistors, we should see the serial data change. So uh, at the moment, it's uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0001. The two least significant bits are up the top there. So let's change one of these resistors here. Change it from a low to a high. And you can see immediately that what's happened on the scope is it's gone to 00101. So let's just look at that. Uh, there's the start bit again, uh, low. Least significant bit first, so it's 10100 and two stop bits. So let's put that, uh, well now let's move another resistor. This is the next most significant bit. And what have we now got? We've got uh, 01101. Let's just analyze that again manually. There's the start bit. So reading from the least significant bit first, it's 10110. So 10110. There it is. The scope decodes it for me. It's just totally awesome. 
Now this UART is transmitting uh, this 5-bit data word repeatedly because of a little bit of circuitry that I've put on. It's actually this transistor here with this resistor because the UART doesn't automatically transmit the same data over and over again. So what I've had to do is I've had to connect the uh, TX empty line and it's on here somewhere, yeah there, TX empty. That goes high when the UART has no data. I fed that through a 10K resistor and a transistor so that every time the transmit buffer is empty, it actually pulses the right line low and writes in data from all these resistors on the data bus so that it retransmits the same byte over and over again. Now, if I take out that little transistor re-triggerer, you can see that it is no longer transmitting the data because the right line is not being pulsed low. Now I can manually pulse it low by doing that and you can see those bursts of that data and occasionally you can see it, the scope decode it as 00001 but I wanted something to continuously send that data so I built this little transistor resistor re-triggerer. Now let's just go through the rather complex uh, setup procedure for this thing. This button up here is reset. If I press that, you'll see these two lights come on. Now they're actually uh, RTS and DCD, I think it is. No, DTR. One of them's DTR, data terminal ready, and the other one's RTS, request to send, I think it is. Uh, so with the chip in reset, I now have to press this button to take the data and control line uh, hide, put it in control mode. Then I have to press this one twice. The first one is uh, the mode command and the second one is the uh, no the mode byte and the second one is the command byte. Now I can let go of that so now it's in data mode and now if I press this button it fires data and I'll just uh, go back to the scope so that you can see that. So it's received its mode and control words. It's now set up um, there is a compromise. Uh, because of the contact bounce on this switch, I have to send the same byte for mode as the byte for control, and they're totally unrelated. So I had to find a byte that would work for mode and control and for the byte of data that I'm sending. And uh, there's the byte of data that I'm sending, and it's the uh, 0001 that we saw earlier. Now I'll just put this uh, transistor re-triggerer circuit back in so that it re-triggers on its own. Uh, let me think, how do I do that? It goes, collector and emitter goes there and base goes there. And there it is. It's all locked on, all stable. The byte of data, well it's not a byte, it's five bits. It's a start bit, five data bits and two stop bits. Uh, it's being transmit and the scope can decode it as 00001. Now there's another difficulty and that is that the scope can only reliably uh, interpret this serial data if it is at a recognizable baud rate. So I had to set the uh, TX clock and that's the second of these little uh, these two little 555 oscillators. This second one has been set to exactly 1.2 kilohertz because 1.2 kilohertz on the TX clock gives you a board rate of 1200 bits per second, uh, 1.2k board. So let me just press the uh, measure button, where is it there, measure, and you can see uh, that it's now measuring uh, channel one, it's measuring a whole cycle and it's showing me that it's 1.22 kilohertz. Now if I change the frequency of the transmit clock by tweaking this pot, you can see that that frequency increases 1.3, 1.4, and then the UART detect fails, uh, the serial decode fails, because it's not at a recognizable baud rate. So let's put that back down to 1.20. If I go too low, of course, it also fails. One kilohertz is not a recognizable board rate. That would be a uh, thousand bits per second. So let's go back to 1200 bits per second. That's near enough, 1.21 kilohertz, and it can decode it. Now for the oscilloscope to be able to decode uh, this serial 
data stream, I suppose it is, and give you an actual decoded value, everything needs to be set up correctly. So if I go to bus and um, serial bus decode, no, that's already on. I want that on, don't I? Yeah. But you can see here that it's uh, counting frames. No, it isn't counting frames because it's not locked on. Let's go to bus config. And if I just tweak something like least significant bit first to MSB first, there we are, it's locked back on. And if I go back, back, it's now counting frames. So each of these uh, five bit words, I suppose they are, you can't really call it a byte if it's five bits. Um, it's a repeatingly transmitted uh, word of data and the scope is counting those words of data as TX frames. Uh, there are no RX frames because RX has been routed to, oh, I think I routed it to the external trigger actually, because I didn't want uh, it trying to interpret this clock as received data. So it's counting the transmit frames uh, and there have been about 6,000 of them so far. But it will only do this reliably if it's set up properly. So in bus config, I have to set number of bits to five if it's set to, um, Oh, no, I'm adjusting the LSB, MSB there. Uh, so if it's number of bits, if it's set to six, well, it actually still works because it's seeing the first of the two stop bits as um, a data bit. So it's actually seeing it as one, zero, 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 one. So it kind of can still interpret it um, with six bits because I've used two stop bits. And I had to use two stop bits because it was very difficult to set the UART up for one stop bit. But anyway, I need five uh, data bits. Parity, none. I have no parity. Board rate, I've had to set to uh, 1200 board. There are lots of different board rates. None of these other ones, of course, will work because my TX clock is uh, 1.2 kilohertz, so 1200 bits per second. Let's go back. And the other one is uh, the polarity. Is it idle high? or idle low, well of course it's idle high because a UART um, is idling in the high position, the start bit is low, then you get the data bits and then the stop bits are high. And MSB first, LSB first, well in fact if you put it to MSB first it just interprets the data the other way around, it sees it as 10000 instead of 00001. So you can have this either way around. So there's my uh, 1980s UART chip on breadboard, uh, a chip designed to be written to by a microprocessor. I've managed to get it to uh, operate on breadboard with no processor. Um, it was very difficult. This has taken about five hours to get to this stage. Um, it required two clocks, for example. This uh, second 555 is the TX clock. It's running at uh, pretty much exactly 1.2 kilohertz. Uh, the other clock is routed through to the clock pin. Where's that on here? Yeah, there it is, clock. And the only thing it said in the data sheet is that this can be any sort of clock, doesn't need to be synchronized to the transmit clock, but it has to be running at least 30 times faster. So this 555 is running pretty much flat out. I think that's 33 picofarad capacitor on there. So I haven't really gone into any detail on um, the build of this uh, breadboard circuit um, and my full analysis of the data sheet because it did take quite a while to understand exactly how this chip needs to be set up to get it to transmit data. Um, I'm not going to do that in this video, but um, if there is an interest in, uh, this is a very old chip of course, but if there's an interest generally in sort of UARTs and how serial data transmissions work, then I can, uh, in a future video, go into more detail about this particular chip, how I breadboarded it, how I worked out that it needed these two clocks and the transistor re-trigger thing and all these reset control data and write switches um, in a lot more detail if you want. But for the moment, that's my chip on breadboard. Cheerio.